You authored the textbook titled Evolutionary Psychology, The New Science of Mind in its uh, sixth edition. What is the magic ingredient that gave birth to Homo sapiens, do you think? Is it fire, cooking, ability to collaborate, share uh, ideas, ability to contemplate our own mortality, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, I think it's hard to isolate one factor. I know, uh, I know you've had Richard Rangham on this yeah. podcast. It was a wonderful, wonderful interview. And uh, he used to be a colleague of mine when I was a professor at, at Michigan. And um, I've stayed in touch with him uh, on and off. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. And he thinks uh, fire and cooking have been one of the key things. But I think it's hard to isolate. Um, I would trace at least part of our uniqueness to uh, the uniqueness of our mating system. So we have in in mating, uh, unlike chimpanzees, who are our closest primate relative, and of which Richard Rangham is is a world's expert, but they have basically no long term pair bonded mating. Mm -hmm. Okay, they female comes into estrus, all the mating, all the sex happens. Most of the sex happens during that window, but humans have evolved long term pair bonded mating. Uh, and it's it's only one mating strategy, but it's a really important one. And then you have with that um, male parental care. So basically, again, we go back to chimps and chimps uh, with whom we share more than 98% of our DNA. The males don't do anything. So they inseminate the females. But then when the kids are born, they basically don't do much of anything in terms of provisioning and so forth. But human males do. We invest um, in, in the modern environment, could be decades, you know, especially with the boomerang kids and everything. But uh, we're, uh, not all males do, but compared to the vast majority of mammals, we are a very heavy male parental investment species. Could okay. you, uh, if it's okay, and I'll ask you a bunch of dumb basic questions, because uh, those are fun. Uh, could you define mating here? Are we, is mating referred to the 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 series of sexual acts that lead to reproduction is it include like dating and love and camaraderie uh loyalty all those things yes uh, i you know when yes I, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah when i first started studying it yeah i don't say it's when i first started studying it i looked for the right term and uh, obviously it's much broader than sex so by mating i include things like mate selection uh, mate preferences, mate attraction, mate retention, mate poaching, um, mate expulsion. So mate yeah. poaching, that sounds fun. So yeah. the early, the uh, the game theoretic st strategy of mate selection is primary what mating, what mating is about, or do you include the long-term ones uh, you agree that you're gonna stick this out for a while and have multiple children. Is that also mating? Yes, I include that as well. So it's okay. it's it's a broad, broad category, broad definition, and 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 absolutely includes the emotion of love. Um, and of course, there are many different types of love: brotherly love, love parents to, for children. Uh, but love, I think, uh, and this is one of the shifts in the social sciences. So when I was an undergraduate, for example, I was taught that love is this. Um, invention by some Caucasian European poets a couple hundred years ago. And um, and it turns out that's not the case. So you you there's been extensive cross-cultural evidence now that um, that people, not every person in all cultures, of course, but all some people in all cultures experience this emotion that we call love. And for the word love, are we going to in this conversation try to stick to sort of romantic love? For the, the for for the meaning of the word love. Well, there. Uh, that's that's a great question, but um, I mean, there. Uh, it's pretty well established that there are these different phases of of love. So there's this uh, infatuation phase where uh, our psychology we we get obsessional thoughts. It's hard to focus on work when we're not with the person we're thinking about the other person constantly uh, so there's kind of like uh, ideational intrusion mm -hmm. into our psychology but you, you you can't sustain that i mean it'd be uh, and then of course uh, there's a uh, pardon the phrase but what i describe is the fucking like bunny's phase of yes. of this you know intense sexuality but mm -hmm. people have other adaptive problems they have to solve 
Uh, and so you can't stay in that state for too long. And so that subsides over time and, um, and develops into, uh, at least in many cases, this warm attachment. Cuddling bunnies, long-term cuddling bunnies. Yes. That's... Phase of the relationship, but still romantic, not like brotherly love or, you know, I guess I, I talk about a love, a lot, love a lot. And for me, uh, you know, love is a broader ex experience of just um, experiencing the joy and the beauty of life. So like just looking out in nature, yeah, that's, that's a kind of love, like whatever the chemicals that lead to a feeling that at least echoes the same kind of feeling that you get with romantic love, you can experience that with even inanimate objects. That sounds weird to say, but just a gratitude and appreciation, um, not in some kind of uh, weird Zen way, but just in a very human way. Just, it feels good to be alive kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I would, I mean, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't thought about that. I guess there, I would use other terms to describe that. So like the term awe, for example, when you see a beautiful sunset, you know, that's why I kind of started out by saying, I think there are different types of love and, yes. and I'm focusing on the mating Type. And we'll talk about that, but so yeah, there is a sense of beauty and there's a sense of sexual appeal, maybe that's a good, and those intersect in fascinating ways. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. We'll talk yeah. about all of that. But you're saying mating strategies, now that we've kind of um, placed ourselves what we mean by mating. Mating strategies is one of the cool features that made humans what they are. One of the initial inventions is is the weird, uh, weird and wonderful ways that we mate. Yeah, and I mean, if you go to even things like um, how we compete for mates, and this is another kind of strange for some people angle on it, but mating is inherently a competitive process uh, in that desirable mates are in scarce supply relative to the numbers of people who want them. 